For years, I dreamed of through hiking the Appalachian Trail. Myself, like many others, desire to take on the challenge of hiking almost 2,200 miles for months on end over difficult terrain in harsh weather and dangerous conditions. Because we love the outdoors, we long for adventure, to travel, to get out of our comfort zone. We seek the peacefulness and beauty of nature and a break from society. And for those of us dealing with depression and anxiety, we long for an outlet to relieve the constant chaos in our minds. And even though this feat is physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausting, we attempt the journey because the trail calls to us. It calls in a way that is hard to explain. It's a yearning, a longing, a voice so resounding it becomes difficult to ignore. It beckons you, pulls you. It's the call of the wild. Officially, the start of my Appalachian Trail through hike. Not gonna lie, I am feeling a little bit nervous. I had a hard time even eating my breakfast this morning. I don't know if I can eat. I'm not I'm nervous. But I know once I'm on the trail, everything's gonna be good. 2020 was the year I decided to fulfill my dream of a long distance hike. With the support of my husband, family, and friends, I quit my job and prepared for leaving months out on the trail. It was hard saying goodbye. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you, Mom. Aww. And um, I'm really proud of you, and I'm Aww. glad you're doing this. Mm. It makes me happy. Don't fall off a cliff into the thing like the one guys did in that uh, movie. Yeah, oh, we walk, walk in the woods? Yeah, that one. Yeah, I will try not to fall off any cliffs. What do you think about me heading out into the woods for six months? I'm happy for you, but I'm also worried about you. Uh, proud, but a little anxious. Can I have a hug on camera? Sure, you can have a <laughs> hug on camera. <laughs> oh. I'm totally gonna miss you. It's gonna be really rough. I love you. I love you. I headed to Georgia in late February. Little did I know all the obstacles I would face on my journey to finish the entire 2,193 miles. And I remember 267. <laughs> the approached trail. It's right behind the visitor center. Let's get hiking, it's raining. Yep, and it's cold. Bye. Good luck out there. Thank you. Thank you. I started my hike at the Amicalola Falls approach trail and set out on a cold rainy day to hike north towards Katahdin. And she's off. I was happy to have my husband Jerry with me for those first few miles. But no sooner had we started ascending the steps to the falls, we found out a large snowstorm was coming, so we said a tearful goodbye. And I continued up the trail alone in the cold rain. Yeah, I think it's sleepy. It's snowing. As I climbed the eight miles toward Springer Mountain, the rain turned to sleep and snow. I made it to Springer Mountain. I quickly got a photo on Springer Mountain. I think I just realized I did not film myself at Springer. Oh my gosh. I'm not starting off very good, or am I? Well, I made it to camp, staying at the, where are we staying at? Um, Springer Mountain shelter. And made it to the shelter with four inches of snow on the ground. The next morning, I woke to most of my gear and clothing frozen solid. Oh man, it was a rough night. I know, it's my first night. <laughs> I'm already like, it's rough. My first day on trail had been wet, cold, and tough. And now, my first morning had me forcing my arms into a frozen, ice-cold jacket. Everything is frozen, like everything. My shoes are frozen, socks, gloves. My, ent my entire backpack was frozen. I left the shelter that morning not sure if I could accomplish this massive goal. Even though I was a seasoned backpacker who had researched and prepared for this journey, between the weather... It's funny, I've had like all three seasons in the last 
two days. I've had rain, snow, and now sun. <laughs> the terrain. So far, I found out that gaps mean you're probably gonna go straight up. You probably went straight down and then you're going straight up. All right, well, basically I have to go up, down, up, down, up. And little mistakes I continue to make. My sleeping bag got a little bit wet here on the top from the condensation on my tent. Um, I don't think I pitched my tent very good. All these rookie mistakes I'm making. <laughs> you think I never backpacked. The trail quickly humbled me to realize this hike was going to be far harder than I could have ever imagined. I would have to work, suffer, and endure to make it the entire 2,193 miles. Man, AT's breaking me in right. <laughs> it's like, oh, you want to hike the AT? Let's find out how bad you want to hike it. But each day, I put one foot in front of the other and tried to remain positive. Some days were easier than others. It's sunny, the birds are chirping, and it just makes me realize why I love being outdoors so much and why this calls to me. But uh, I'm not gonna lie, the past two days, and I know they were our first days, were rough. <laughs> and if I could just tell myself, you know, that the bad days make the good days so much sweeter. You know, I think I've got a shot at this thing. Even though I was hiking alone, I had a constant companion with me, a miniature handmade Baby Yoda plushie my daughter made for me to carry on my hike. I'll be uh, going on my adventures and hopefully be the first Baby Yoda to summit Katahdin. As I hiked through Georgia, the trail continued to present many challenges. This has been the trail for about a mile now. <laughs> another crossing. Luckily, it was another rock hop. You cannot tell, but it's like, like that. <laughs> Even with all the planning and preparation, after only a week into my hike, I was ready to get rid of some gear. It's funny how quickly you realize how much of that luxury stuff you think you want that you really just don't want. You don't want to carry it. So my husband picked me up and I went into town to change out some gear. With moving my gear around, I was actually able to get my pack packed a little bit better. Ooh, it's made a world of difference. My pack already feels so much better. With a little bit lighter pack, I climbed over Blood Mountain in the cold, foggy rain. Man, look at this. Lots of slick, wet rock to go down. <sighs> Gotta be super slow, careful. careful. It's kinda cool looking though, huh? <laughs> I have officially left the Blood Mountain Wilderness. current situation. Oh yeah. But not all days were rainy. The fog is dissipating! Yay! And look, it's gonna be a sunny day! Those warm, sunny days always lived in my spirits. It is really nice. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. And sometimes there were views. Wow! But those first few weeks, the weather was tough. One particular day after hours of climbing, fighting cold wind, and trudging through deep pockets of snow. The wind is ridiculous. The wind hit me, the snow. Ugh. I had my first meltdown. I just want to be on top of this stupid mountain. It's so steep. And it just keeps going and going. And the snow and the wind. I just had a rough morning. Despite the daily obstacles and constant roller coaster of emotions, the trail always called to push me forward, and I tried to stay positive. I've had several days of rain, several days, of, and a few days of snow, but we've had some sun too. Definitely lots of ups and downs over mountains, but there's no better place to be than out on the trail. I even met other hikers along the way. Say hello to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> What's your channel name? Mary Poppins. And what are you going by? Poppins. And why are you Because I rock the umbrella. Mm-hmm. And some people think I'm practical. <laughs> hi there, baby. Hey, tea. Say hi. Say hi to YouTube. And got my first taste of trail magic. Cherry pie. And I have a Mountain Dew, which I never drink Mountain Dews. But you know what? I'm going to have one. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Thank you so much for being out here. We appreciate it. Second trail, food magic of the day. The miles passed quickly, and before I knew it, I was finished with Georgia. 
I officially have less than a mile of Georgia left. Ta-da! Did it! Officially crossed out of Georgia. Goodbye, Georgia. Hello, North Carolina. Baby Yoda, you did it! You hiked through Georgia. It's almost like a sleigh with a reindeer or something. Almost as soon as I enter North Carolina, the trail got steeper. So apparently, North Carolina is trying to show who's boss. I literally just climbed straight up the side of a mountain face. You know what's worse than climbing a mountain straight up? It's climbing a mountain straight up in snow. I was all like, at lunch, I was excited. I was like, well, I've only got 2.8 miles left. And now it's more like, oh God, I got 2.8 miles left. And the terrain tougher. One thing about North Carolina so far, they don't always cut down their trees. Lots and lots of down trees. This is the kind of stuff we have to traverse. Oh yeah, it's fun. Oh man, it just keeps going and going. <laughs> Whoa, see, snow and it's melting. It's the worst. Oh my gosh, because all the think, oh gosh. <laughs> Leaves. Whew. I just about got my, my head knocked off by this tree branch because I've got this this on, so I'm kind of looking down. Yeah, I just whacked it. The weather continued to be a challenge as I hiked through even more snow. Yep, more snow. Lots and lots of snow. I have this snow thing down pat. I just get those monkeys. More rain. All right, well, today promises to be filled with tons and tons of rain. I made it to camp, got my tent set up in the rain. A lot of my stuff is wet. It looks to be another day of rain. Oh my God, I just heard thunder. This is what I'm hiking in. Yeah. I'm a drowned rat. I am literally soaked from head to toe. Oh yeah, this is your trail. This is what you're hiking in. <laughs> and the cold. It's super, super cold. I mean, it's got to be in the teens. I'm trying to hike fast to stay warm. Yeah, but hypothermia is no joke. Really want some warm weather. I really, really want some warm weather. Prior to my hike, I had romanticized the trail, but the realities of through hiking soon kicked in. It's pouring rain and it's hitting the tent, and then the tent is creating conversation. And the drops are hitting me. Ugh. Let's be real. Last night sucked. Everything got wet. Like, I mean, it rained so much that what was happening was the water would just drip into on my bag and everything else. But the worst thing about waking up in the morning is when it's really, really cold and windy. And you know you have to get up out of your warm sleeping bag. For those of you who inspired to through hike. This this is one of those days when it's not fun. It's not fun at all. It was not a fun hike. I didn't even look up at the trail at all for five miles. I mean, I looked at the ground so I wouldn't trip over a route or, you know, just so I could see where I'm going. I mean, I knew coming out here was gonna be hard. I knew it, but you could think you know it until you actually live it. And then when you live it, you're like, whoa. Having a sense of humor helped get me through the difficult days. I just keep telling myself I'm a duck. Quack, quack, quack. Quack, quack, quack. Oh, you didn't know trekking poles made good oars, did you? Well, now you know. And sometimes singing. Singing in the rain. I'm singing in the rain. Here's the fire tower. I'm not gonna climb it because there's no fuse and it's wet. I missed the 100 mile mark. It was on the fire tower stairs. I guess it was right there and totally missed it. So yeah, I've hiked 100, over 100 miles now. I had reached my first 100 miles on the AT, but I still had a long way to go. After several days in difficult weather, it was time for another zero. And now we got hot chocolate and a warm car. Oh, oh I can't even talk. I've dreamt about this all day. <laughs> Now to get all these oh man, awful you wet this. clothes off. We are here at Chica and Sunset's Hostel. This is Chica and this is Sunset's. This is so nice. 
Oh my gosh, this is so nice. On a zero day, I didn't hike, but instead spent time in town taking a shower. Oh man, it feels so good to be showered and clean. And now we're getting our laundry done. Washing my stinky, dirty hiker clothes and resupplying my food for the next several hiking days. Sometimes I picked up a resupply box from the post office. Picking up a package. My friend Carrie, she's so awesome. She sent me a resupply box. Look at this smorgasbord of food. This is awesome. Enjoying delicious town food and getting a much needed rest was always a treat. The Appalachian Trail. Woohoo! To a day in town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two days of dinner. <laughs> But with many more miles to hike, it was time to get back on the trail. No matter how difficult, the trail always gifted me with some sunny days. It's going to be so great to actually be in good weather. The birds are chirping. I've got baby Yoda out. It's a good day. Beautiful views. Wow. Thank goodness, I finally got a view of something. Oh man, yay. And more trail magic. Mm. Mm -hmm. I said I wasn't gonna drink Cokes, but uh, I need the sugar. Look at the tiny snowflakes. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. As each day passed, the miles added up, the weather improved, and there was no better place to be. Always look on the bright side of life. I got my sunglasses out. <laughs> and I saw my first sunrise on trail. That sunrise it was so awesome. That's what I have wanted to see on the trail since I've been out here. Wow, this is cool. This is what we're climbing down. And that's the trail. Look at that bone. It's crazy. A nice little pipe spring. Those are helpful. What a really nice water source. It's a little house. The troll. That's the kind of trolls I like right there. I'm going to Tanana Outdoor Center today. Super exciting. And even more exciting is Jerry is coming to see me. Oh, he brought me a Diet Coke. Ah, heaven. Jerry just said I smell. Yes. That's the first time ever. It's, whoa. All right, this way to the AT. Ooh. It's another day on the AT with fantastic views. 20 miles to Fontana Dam. I'm going to cross this now, and it is a busy intersection. Looks like it goes that way and then that way. Starting my first hike in the dark. There was just all kinds of animal noises last night. Coyotes, owls. Carnation instant breakfast. The breakfast of champion hikers. <laughs> Luck have it, the shuttle just arrived, yay. All right, Ben just gave us a ride here to Fontana Village. I had made it to Fontana Village, met more hikers, and prepare to enter the Smokies. They have a little station here so you can get your Smokies permit. As I hiked across Fontana Dam, a sense of nostalgia and happiness enveloped me. One of the things I keep feeling throughout this hike, no matter how bad days get or whatever, is how grateful I am to just be out here, just to be able to do this. I'm coming, Smokies. I'm coming home. Braids is coming home. I placed my permit in the box and I was officially back home in the Smokies. Having hiked all the trails in the Great Smoky Mountains over many years, I was happy to be back in familiar territory. It felt like I had walked home, even though I had many more miles to hike. hiked 16 miles and made it to my first shelter in the Smokies. I'm going to put some of this foot care on my feet. I was so grateful for a break in snow, nice views on Rocky Top. Rocky Top, you always be home sweet home. Rocky 
Top Ten of the Sea. And Trail Maintenance Crew. Thank you all for all your work, yeah. hard work. The miles added up quickly and I saw my first wildlife on the AT. How about those deer, man? Like I just walked right up on them. <laughs> Yay, I got to see some wildlife. As minutes turned into hours and hours into days, I lost track of time out on the trail. Because when you're out here, you forget what day it is. I have to keep thinking, what day is it? And it's Sunday. And today, I don't even, I don't even know the date. Yeah, zero, no, no idea. And my senses overtook me. Mmm, so is that Christmas? Mmm, that pine smell smells so good. It smells a lot better than it does in a taxi cab. 2.2 to Cleman's Dome and the 200 mile mark, baby! Oh yeah! Before I knew it, I had made it to Cleman's Dome and 200 miles high view. It's on top of Cleman's Dome and it's windy and cold. Lots of mud puddles today from all the rain, but at least the water sources will be full. Life was good as friends surprised me with trail magic and I met more hikers at the shelter. All right, I'm at Mount Collins Shelter. I've got my water, changed my clothes because I was kind of wet. Um, and it's a full shelter tonight. Super full shelter. That was the joy we We were all excited for what lied ahead and little did we know what the next few days would bring. This is the best night ever. The next day, I made it to Newfound Gap, where my husband, family, and friends awaited me. I was amazed so many had come out to cheer me on, and I never felt so much love and support. Oh my God! Uh, Shannon told us in that you love Diet Coke, so we yes. Diet Coke. I took a zero in Gatlinburg and spent time with my family and friends. Look at these three awesome people. Oh, I love them. We love you. Found a pretty good place to dry my tent and my tarp and my shoes. <laughs> Every food hacker should find a hot tub. Isn't this awesome? This would be the last normal day on trail. News of a highly contagious virus spreading throughout the country had made its way to the trail and businesses began shutting down. This dang virus. <sighs> I mean, it's just causing up for here, everywhere. And uh, so the NLC has had to close. There was fear among hikers that potential trail closures were imminent. I just feel like I'm still safer out here than I am in town. I got the you. thought of having to leave the trail <laughs> was devastating. This is my dream. <laughs> Because I mainly hiked alone, being on the trail seemed like a much safer option, so I continued hiking. Something just keeps telling me, keep pressing on, it's going to be okay. As I hiked, the fog lifted and the skies cleared. That's some awesome views. Oh, yeah. I was gifted with even more trail magic. This is awesome. And the first signs of spring appeared as wildflowers began to bloom. Oh, my gosh. The wildflowers are starting to bloom. As I hiked out of the Smokies, I remained optimistic about the days ahead. The hike over Snowbird Mountain was foggy and tough, and I was having difficulty staying positive. Lots and lots of these super steep climbs back to cold and rainy and even a little bit windy. I am ready for this day to be over. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, it just felt, it just felt like a rough day. 
I'm gonna start a hard diet. Ooh, we're close. Okay, yay. We're close. Yay. I'm taking meds and Diet Coke. Oh. But my good friend Angela had come out to bring me donuts and Diet Coke, and it lifted my spirits. I know Diet Coke and donut. Probably not. It's an ironic combination, but I don't care. Oh my god, this is so good. Mm. That evening, as I camped atop Max Patch, the fog seemed to match my outlook as I was unclear on the future of my through hike. Oh man, now this was worth staying up here for. Oh my gosh. But the next morning, the sky had cleared and I woke to one of the most beautiful sunrises of my entire hike. The day passed quickly and I was gifted with even more trail magic by hiker friends. Even though it was raining, I didn't want to leave the comfort and safety of the woods as I hiked into hot springs. Once in town, I discovered the severity of the virus was increasing. Hostels were starting to close and many hikers were getting off trail. On March the 23rd, I spent the night at the Iron Horse Station The ATC put out a statement. <clears throat> this is, I think, maybe about an hour ago. Basically saying for everybody to get off the AT. Day hikers, just people, nobody to be on the AT. And made the difficult decision to leave the trail. For now, I'm getting off the trail. Hoping it was only temporary. Getting off trail and going home was a difficult transition. Life had changed for everyone and wearing a mask became the new norm. And uncertainty loomed as the pandemic swept the world with illness, deaths, and shutdowns. I have now been off trail for over 30 days and have basically just been at home. So I have had my mental health suffer from that because of this whole situation. As the weeks passed, it became apparent that being outdoors was a much needed reprieve for mental health and a good way to avoid potential exposure of the virus. Hiking is very important to my mental health. So parks and hostels started opening back up and the opportunity to get back on trail was hopeful. Crossing my fingers and staying positive to the hope that I'll be able to get back out on the Appalachian Trail here very soon. The call to return to the trail was strong, and on May the 23rd, I headed to Hot Springs to resume my hike after 61 long days off trail. I wasn't sure what to expect on my return, but I quickly learned the trail community needed hikers as much as we needed the trail, and they welcomed us back with open arms. My first day back on the AT was beautiful, sunny, and warm. The last time I was out here, it was cold and wintry, and now it's really warm. All of the foliage and vegetation is just so green. The trail had come to life with the sounds and beauty of nature. And it felt good to be back on the trail. Oh, I love seeing the white blazes again. Oh, I missed you. The clouds started rolling in, so instead of staying on Rich Mountain Fire Tower, I decided to push on to the next campsite. But no sooner had I got to camp and started eating my dinner, an unexpected visitor showed up behind me. No, you're not getting my food. Get out of here. Go, get. Holy crap, it's a bear. Dude. Go! You got plenty of food out here. Go! Get! Get! I just started eating. And he was like right behind me. Like 20 feet from me. Not far. I survived the night with the bear on the loose. 
like I heard him trying to get the food bags down from the bear cables. And luckily it is still hanging. Even though the night had been pretty eventful, I was learning on this journey to expect the unexpected. As it got warmer, the wildlife came out. Hi, buddy. You girls are so pretty. Oh, there's another one. Hi. Hi, ladies. The foliage got thicker and the temperature hotter, which meant drinking lots of water to avoid dehydration. When it's really hot like this, you gotta make sure you drink a lot of water. And rain was always a welcome relief. Warm rain doesn't feel too bad. Cool. After being off trail for two months, I'd lost my trail legs and it felt like I had started my hike all over again. I am definitely feel myself out of shape, like I'm, I'm going pretty slow today. Wow, oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. One of my most favorite and unexpected views was on top of Big Bald Mountain. I was overcome with emotion as I took in the 360 degree views. I am so glad I, I'm out here. I'm so glad I got back out. The beauty of the trail was breathtaking and I was so happy I'd heeded the call to go back to the trail. The Appalachian Trail is a series of constant ups and downs, but going over the Roan Highlands made the climbing seem easier because the views were so magnificent. Way down there is where I was at earlier. Camping on top of a mountain and watching the sunset might be one of the greatest experiences ever. The scenery on the Appalachian Trail varied wildly, and there was always something new to see. The portion of the AT that weaves in and out of North Carolina and Tennessee was one of my favorite sections of the trail. Oh, so lovely. Taking a zero at a hostel was always a treat. Getting a warm bed, hot food, and a cold drink made spending long days out on the trail worth it. Even though there were less hikers on the trail, I still met so many incredibly nice people. I'm Gumby. I'm Smokey Bear. Pneumonia. My name is Blue Sasquatch. I am Jukebox. And Zazu. Walmart. <laughs> Running Bear. And before I knew it, I was finished with North Carolina. Ah! Oh yeah, this is the way. The warm weather made it easier to enjoy the little things like birds, butterflies, beautiful wildflowers, and all the little critters along the trail. Another friend. And I made it a point to take my time and enjoy everything. Look at Mr. Lizard. He's so cute. Hi. What you doing, buddy? Hey, buddy. Want to hike with me? I think we're about the same pace. Looks like a pancake with maple syrup on top. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, dude. Oh, that's a cool rock. Oh, I'm taking a break here and put my feet up on this tree. Today it's not going to be hiking in braids. It's going to be hiking in a bun. It's very humid. But the warmer temps also meant enjoying the bugs and bug bites. The bugs are so bad. On, on the back of my shoulder, I think it's a bite. I mean, I think it might be a spider bite. I mean, I've got bites all over my legs. The tall grass and muggy air along the trail meant being constantly attacked by mosquitoes, gnats, and chickers. Oh man, it's like a jungle out here. The bug spray didn't work. It's exactly the same. It's like freaking mosquito land. Oh, my legs are so bad. Mm. And usually walking through oh. spider webs. Oh my god. The amount of 
spider webs I've had to like go through. You think these spiders would learn? Their webs do not stay up. They keep getting knocked over, and they would stop putting them across the trail. Spiders are stupid. <sighs> I swear. I mean, that's been like the biggest obstacle out here so far is the bugs. <laughs> but I will say this: ticks have not been a problem for me. I guess there's a positive to everything. <laughs> Sometimes the obstacles were pretty adorable. Bye, baby dear. Look at this little guy. He got into the water somehow. The other times, look at that creepy looking cabin. You know what the scariest thing out here is? Birds. Oh yeah, they like to hide in the grass on the ground. And then right before you walk up on them, they dart out in front of you. I guess I'm getting tired. <laughs> um, I just fell. Like, I mean, I practically face planted. But each mile hiked was another mile closer to the finish. So I pressed on, and before I knew it, I'd hiked 400 miles. Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, 400. The heat had caused my feet to swell, and it was nice soaking them in all the waterfalls along the trail. Oh, that feels so good. Oh, man, putting my feet in that cold water did the trick. I enjoyed the serenity and tranquility of walking alone, but it was always nice meeting other hikers along the trail. Ants is having oatmeal. Oatmeal, <laughs> breakfast and lunch of champions. I, hey. He just got a trail name, Toy Story. I had hiked 467 miles of the AT when I reached the Tennessee-Virginia border. Three states down, oh yeah. <laughs> Three and a half miles to be in Damascus. Trail is so different in Virginia than it was in Tennessee. It's just crazy how it just immediately changed. What are those crazy sounding things? Damascus! Yes! The town of Damascus is home to trail days and is typically buzzing with hikers in June. But as I entered town, it seemed pretty deserted. And town definitely is not bustling. It's kind of sad, really. Because of COVID restrictions, restaurants had limited seating and shorter hours. So it was sometimes difficult finding a place to eat. Jerry and I may have found somewhere we can eat. Well, me and my first burger in a while. And then we got some wings. And there's Jerry's burger. And there's Jerry. <laughs> Doing a through hike sometimes requires being a little flexible. Up here right now at the Grace of Highlands, headed over to Massey Gap. So the plan had been Jerry and I were going to hike from Damascus up to Massey Gap. But because the parking lots are closed, like completely, we couldn't leave our car here. So instead we had a shuttle bring us up here and then we're gonna hike southbound to Damascus. In the year 2020, it was an absolute must. But I was happy to be hiking with my husband and seeing the wild ponies. Hi! You're so cute! Wow, I can see why everybody wants to come to the Grayson Highlands area. Hi! We hiked together for two days and saw ponies, deer, cows, large lizards, and my very first snake on the AT. Hi there, buddy! Oh man, it's been so awesome having my husband out here with me the past two days. He also met fellow hikers, Walmart and Wizard, who gave him a trail name. Thanks, Wizard. Yeah, yeah that's Jerry's new trail name, Hob. Hob stands for hiking, no, I'm sorry, husband, husband of braids. Of braids. <laughs> Before taking two months off trail, I'd anticipated that by mid-June, I'd be much farther into my hike. Way to go, babe. Awesome. And even though I had hiked 500 miles, my anxiety had me worrying whether I could reach Katahdin by mid-October. So I wouldn't stress about time, I decided to temporarily skip the remaining part of Virginia and come back at the end to have Grayson Highlands be my finish with the ponies. So I'm skipping Virginia, or the majority of it, and doing it in the fall in October, which I think is going to be pretty awesome to see Virginia in the fall. I think it's going to be beautiful. So I said goodbye to my husband. This is always so hard, but it's like, it seems harder because now I'm like going farther up north and farther away from home and we're not going to see each other for like three months. And, and a very nice couple following my journey offered to give me a ride from Damascus to Harpers Ferry. 
have made it to Harper's Ferry thanks to these two amazing people, Mark and Gail. They are just truly amazing trail angels and I cannot thank them enough for all they've done for me. And it just means so much that they came here all the way from Indiana to come pick, get me in Damascus and bring me here. And you guys are just amazing. Thank you so very no much. Problem. I'd planned to resume in Harper's Ferry, but the pedestrian bridge crossing the Potomac River was closed due to a trail derailment. So I continued my hike on the other side of the river in Maryland. I was nervous about the miles ahead, but Maryland was a welcome relief from the southern states as the first three miles along the river were the flattest on the entire AT. This is nice. Hiking through Maryland had some of the gentlest terrain of the entire trail. Like you would think someone comes out every day in man cares it. Although I was surprised to find there are definitely some rocky sections. Why did Owen tell me the Maryland had a ton of rocks? <laughs> uh, you either get a perfectly manicured trail or you get rocks. Lots of more rock scrambling. But the trail was well maintained with plenty of white blazes. They're so good with their blazes. And creative AT markers along the pristine footpath. It's the little things. Even the shelters were incredibly nice. It's basically a log cabin. <laughs> oh my gosh, wow. Going further north, I wasn't sure if I'd see anyone else on the trail, but my first night at camp, I met more hikers. I am Two Wheels. I'm from Washington State. I am Dusty, and I am from South Carolina. Uh, my name's Mike. I'm also from South Carolina. I'm Shurefoot, and I'm from Massachusetts. As I hiked, I passed several historic sites, including the original Washington Monument. The original Washington Monument and saw several lovely vistas. Look at this view. That's nice. The days and miles passed super quickly as I walked over interstates, interstate. Holy smoke. under overpasses, and across farmland, and saw more wildlife. But before I knew it, I had officially crossed the Mason-Dixon line with my new hiker friends. The gang's all here. Go. South. North. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> We're going to the road to get picked up, to go into town and get resupply. Soon after crossing the state line, we hitched a ride with a trail angel. We gotta all get in here. <laughs> There's four of us right here. Look at it. How's that? You got enough room there, buddy? Who took us to Walmart for resupply and town food. This is true Walmart. hiker trash right here. We <laughs> <laughs> packaging, eating somewhere. But we didn't stay long and we're back on trail in a few hours. Back on the trail. And made it to our first shelter in Pennsylvania. Non-snoring. Snoring. It's so pretty when the sun beams come through the trees. Pennsylvania is commonly referred to by hikers as Rocksylvania. And although a good portion of this 230 mile section is rocky, lots and lots of rocks, I was pleasantly surprised to find a variety of terrain and scenery with lots of farmland and greenways. It's one thing about Pennsylvania, it seems like you don't get bored because it's just always something new to see. The lower portion of the state was relatively flat and I hiked my first 21 mile day. Woo! I did basically 20.7. That's my biggest trail day. I was only a couple of days into Pennsylvania when I hit the official halfway point of the AT. I have, but I have it. A special sign had even been made for the class of 2020. And although this wasn't my halfway point since I had skipped Virginia, it was nice to see nonetheless. Oh my God, that is so beautiful. Even though I had hiked less than 600 miles, I decided to try the half gallon challenge. The ice cream challenge has officially begun. All right. We're how many minutes into this? 24. 24 minutes. And look, I'm barely... Yeah. I'm about to be a loser of this challenge and I don't even care. This is really hard. Yeah, so the sad reality is we can't do this. 
Since I'd only been back on trail for 27 days, my hiker hunger hadn't kicked in, but that would soon change. Pennsylvania was the first state where I could get town food while hiking along the trail. Woo! Oh my gosh, look at this. This is like oh the most awesome thing ever. I found several restaurants and delis close to the trail. In about three miles, there's a general store. And it's right like pretty much on the trail. It's like two hands off the trail. And experienced ordering pizza at a shelter for the first time. So I'm gonna go to the 501 shelter. It's closed, but I can tent there. But um, you can get pizza delivered up there. Other than a few steep sections, most of Pennsylvania was relatively low elevation, which meant humidity. Yes, it's flipping humid. Even with it being overcast, it's just so hot. And tons of gnats. <sighs> Already starting. Some bugs are biting. They're pretty natty. Mm, I hate the gnats the worst. Traversing rocks while swatting gnats was pretty challenging. And the rocks moving didn't help either. Of course, those weren't the only challenges. <laughs> Dang beavers. <laughs> too bad. I mean, they're pretty muddy. But I just walked through an epic spider web, like literally face. <laughs> it was pretty muddy through here. <sighs> okay, composure. <laughs> See, this morning, having put on those soaking wet clothes that smell like, I mean, I can smell myself as I wipe the sweat off my face. I'm like, you know what? I just like wiped my nose with that earlier. So when I wipe the sweat, all I'm really doing is just wiping snot on my face. <laughs> I'm always so dirty. It's gross. Yeah, being through hiker is pretty nasty. Even though my gear was light, my frameless pack was uncomfortable. So I switched to a framed pack. This pack that I have now is a thousand times better. Even the new sleeping pad I bought in Virginia wouldn't stay inflated, so I had to replace it as well. My pad completely deflated last night. Like, yeah, I pretty much slept on the ground. You can research gear all you want and buy what you think is the best and stuff can still happen. The combination of warm weather and rocks meant snakes. And there were lots of snakes on the trail, even rattlesnakes. I know, I hear you and I had to be extra careful when going over the rocky sections. See, this is what you gotta watch for. Crap. One of the biggest challenges besides the rocks was a lack of reliable natural water sources. There was a 14 mile stretch past the town of Walling Springs oh, yeah. where no water was available. Thankfully, there was trail magic. Oh my gosh, look at this. We got hiker drinks. I got a pineapple, I got um, a banana, I got two pears, and I got a tired old orange. And amazing trail angels who supplied plenty of water jugs along the trail to make sure hikers didn't get dehydrated. Welcome. This, Welcome. this is mine. He's the one who gives us all the water on the trail. Yay! But for all the challenges in Pennsylvania, there were some pretty great moments. Now this is how you hike. Oh my gosh. Borderline is the best caretaker ever. <laughs> Sweet girl. Blackberries. Ow. And more beautiful views. Wow, that's really pretty. And although most days I hiked alone, I continued to meet many more hikers along the trail. Bear watcher. Jinx. So this is Road Runner. He's also through hiking. Yep. This is Lucky. It's Mama Bear and Baby Bear. I called her Little Bear. Uh, I made it to one of my favorite towns on the AT, Delaware Water Gap, and enjoyed delicious baked goods from the Apple Pie Bakery. I left town and crossed the highway into New Jersey. Similar to Pennsylvania, the terrain and scenery in New Jersey varied wildly. There were beautiful ponds, boggy wetlands, 
The green pond. Oh, man. Countless rocks. It's a lot of rocks. There's rocks everywhere. Several fire towers. This is Catfish Fire Tower. Does that mean it's not really a fire tower? And so many incredible views. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Wow. The elevation also varied as I hiked across boardwalks. It's a pretty long boardwalk. I think it's like a couple miles or something. Through cornfields, over wooden planks, and along narrow roads. Lots of road crossings today. And I'm walking along a shoulder that looks pretty narrow right here. Ugh, freaks me out. This is the worst, man, because there's like no shoulder. But at times, the trail quickly changed and I was climbing up short, steep, rocky sections. Oh, I guess I'm climbing somewhere up there. Holy crap. For a relatively low mileage state, I was excited to encounter so much wildlife. I saw cows. Hi, New Jersey cow. Several deer. There's three of them. How are you not, like, scared? Even more black bears. That's a male bear, and he's big. Get! Okay. Well, I just saw the butt of a big old huge black bear. Oh, man, the bears are everywhere in New Jersey. In my very first porcupine. Oh my God, you're so cute. I didn't know porcupines could climb trees. But unfortunately, no beavers. Where you at, beavers? Come out. I've hiked 808 and a half miles. Even though I had hiked 800 miles and gained trail legs, the physical aspect of hiking wasn't getting any easier. Whoa, whoa, oh my gosh. That is really muddy. I about slid on my butt. <laughs> and I got a man in my eyeball. Stupid mats, I swear, I hate those things. And the mental struggle was getting tougher. I think just feeling like I'm not even halfway yet and it's just been so hard and knowing I literally still have double of what I've already done plus a little bit more. I don't want to quit but that doesn't mean it makes it any mentally easier. So whenever my spirits were at their lowest the trail always provided. I am struggling mentally today I'm just gonna tell you I'm having a mentally tough day. Little things like this helps. <laughs> Whether it was cold drinks, hot food, a ride to town, or a kind word the trails seem to bring out the best in people, and the kindness of strangers never cease to amaze me. The Kentucky, Kentucky Girl. Oh, hey, I've seen you on the gun. My channel name is um, Chess's Adventures. And there is Scout and Pat Albert. In one town, hikers could camp overnight at a drive in theater and watch a movie for free. They even provided a radio for sound. Sometimes it was difficult choosing between hiking bigger miles or taking time to relax and enjoy the little things along the trail. That is neat. Finally took my shoes off. I haven't taken them off today. Ooh, they needed it. I'm just enjoying myself today. And it's kind of nice. It's nice to just really enjoy the trail a little bit and not just be like, oh, I gotta get me miles. I have to, you know, get, I've gotta get there. And In a year when everything seemed hopeless, as I took my first steps into New York, the trail felt like a welcome relief where all good things were possible. Baby Yoda, what are you doing over there in New Jersey? It's time to come to, it's time to come to New York, buddy. Yay! New York continued to have a wide variety of terrain and scenery. Look, it's almost like walking on pavement. Oh, I'm so excited. Whether it was walking on boardwalks in the Great Swamp, passing by Nuclear Lake, crossing the Hudson River over Bear Mountain Bridge, or climbing up rock stairs and over large boulders. Lots of rocks, like climbing here, like um, having to use your hands to push yourself up. There was so much to experience in the relatively short 93 mile section. That tree looks like a goblin. Whoa. Are any of you animals afraid at all, ever? I'm just curious. Look at what we got here. So much climbing. Although there were constant steep ups and downs, the views were stunning. Here's the view at the top of the climb. 
and I got a hazy view of the Manhattan skyline for the first time. I assumed the further north I went, the cooler it would be, but New York in the summer was downright muggy. I experienced some of the most brutal heat on the entire trail through this section with temperatures over 103 degrees. It's another day of like high heat index. It's this heat, I mean, it's bad. Literally the real feel yesterday was 103. I mean, this isn't really very safe weather to be hiking in. And the friction between heat and sweat led to painful heat rashes. I think I'm getting like really bad heat rashes from the sweat and the heat. All these places were like sweat collects or something. It's just really rashy and just, just burning and oh, it's awful. And the bugs were relentless. Oh my gosh, I can't describe how bad they are. I'm, I'm literally gonna attack. And I put all kinds of stuff on and they don't care. Basically stuck here because it is literally like mosquito heaven here. Oh my God, it's not heaven. It's mosquito hell. <laughs> It is horrible. Like, they're like all over my tent. Like, they're waiting to suck my blood. Freaking vampires. I mean, look at it. It's disgusting. They're just everywhere. Ugh. I just got stunned a few minutes ago. Oh, yeah. Good times. But wearing a bug net helped keep my sanity in check. <sighs> Probably should have done that sooner. <laughs> But I'm amazed at how much this bug net is helping. Many of the campsites were closed due to aggressive bear activity, which made it hard finding places to camp along the trail. So far, it has been sweltering heat, like crazy climbs, to aggressive bears, to closed campsites, and the mosquitoes and the gnats and the flies are so bad. This is the through record life uncomfortable all the time 24 7. for all the hardships on the trail there were equally amazing experiences hiking through new york sometimes didn't even feel like hiking if disney world had a trail <laughs> this is what it would look like i walked through a zoo past a local swimming pool camped at a beach had pizza delivered to a shelter ate ice cream from vending machines and visited so many delis all while hiking on the trail. Man, look at my cheeseburger and my fries. It's a lot of food. Water sources were few and far between. And I'm filtering my only water source for another five miles. And not as desirable. It is kind of yellow, it's brown. But delis, vending machines, and trail magic made up for the lack of availability. <gasps> Jackpot! Although hiking through New York was tough, it was one of my favorite states on the trail. Park Ranger brought me a cold ice bottle of water and a and a Kool Aid jammers, and then these two nice, uh, two young girls brought me a couple apples. <laughs> like everybody's so nice. Actually, it was bought for me by an awesome lady named Sophia. She's over there. <laughs> She's over there. Um, <laughs> Even in a crazy year, I never felt more love and acceptance. <laughs> Whether it's people on trail and just tell me, you know, good luck. People on town, businesses, they have all been amazingly nice. In fact, yeah, I mean, the police have been very nice. Before leaving New York, I ended up with a severe case of poison ivy and took several days off trail to recover. I got poison ivy. <laughs> The mosquitoes have gotten kind of sick of like biting me, so the poison ivy decided to just, you know, step up to the plate. One side of my back, like from like my waist down is, was bad. And then it's like pretty much in all these other little places too. So it just, oh my gosh, it's so awful. Oh my God, I'm doing so bad this morning. It's horrible. Poison ivy is the worst thing ever. I realized this was putting me even further behind schedule to reach Katahdin in time. Woot woot, look where I made it to. I'm gonna be in Connecticut. We made it to Connecticut, baby Yoda. Yay! We did it! Hiking through Connecticut was a mixture of pristine flat stretches. Another relaxing stroll along the river and steep rocky scrambles. Got a little bit of climb here. Here's a little bit of what the trail looks like right now. With a variety of scenery and road walking. 
Even though it was a short 48 mile section, I saw beautiful views, an abundance of wildlife. Hello, Mr. Frog. What you doing, buddy? Oh, hi, grasshopper. Look like a leaf. Oh man, I just saw a bear. He went like running run that way. And my very first raccoon on the trail. It's a raccoon. I've never seen one in the wild. Hi. Oh man. <laughs> Unfortunately, gnats were still an issue. The bugs are horrendous in Connecticut. And water was difficult to come by. There's not a lot of water. I went to the, the water source because somebody had commented that it was flowing. There was nothing. So uh, I'm getting low on, pretty low on water. Don't appreciate that water until it's hard to get. <laughs> but there was always magic in the form of trail angels who offer delicious food and drinks. Oh my gosh. So awesome. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> Connecticut has been awesome about trail magic. And a ride into town for resupply. This is Kent. They have a little welcome center there that oh, they just built yeah. over the past couple of years. Christine picked me up and took me to Kent and she even had a ice cold water for me. The campsites in Connecticut were well maintained with plenty of flat tenting spots, bare boxes to store food, and unique privies. This is your view when you're sitting on the toilet. I enjoy soaking my feet in the Housatonic River and relaxing on a porch swing at a campsite with a pavilion. I had 14 miles remaining in Connecticut when I reached Falls Village on August the 2nd. I had hiked 977 miles, but still had a long way to go. I decided it was time to change my hike to a flip-flop and head to Maine to finish the remainder of the trail southbound. This way I could continue to take my time and enjoy this once in a lifetime adventure. Christine, who was an incredibly nice trail angel, picked me up at the Toy Makers Cafe and drove me to the airport in the pouring rain. Thank you so much, Christine. You're just such an awesome trail angel and I really appreciate you. Of course, this would not be the end of my obstacles as my flight was delayed due to a hurricane that had hit the East Coast and I had to spend a full day at the airport. The flight I had, that was supposed to be leaving in an hour, was canceled. So now the new flight is set to go out at 7 p.m. And it is now 9.30 a.m. So I will be here all day long. I'm not complaining because I am safe. But at least there wasn't anyone next to me on my flight to Maine. The next morning, I got a ride with a hostile shuttle to Millinocket, Maine. I have made it to the Appalachian Trail Lodge. And I'll be summoned in Katana tomorrow. Yay! The next morning, I headed to Baxter State Park to summit Katahdin. Got my Katahdin permit. I am like so nervous and so excited at the same time. Hiking the hunt trail to Mount Katahdin had tons of vertical climbing and bouldering. I don't know if that gives you an idea. <laughs> it's like just vertical. It was by far the hardest and most beautiful part of the trail. Wow. Despite all the obstacles and detours, I summited Mount Katahdin on August the 6th. Although this mountain was not my finish, it was still a major milestone as I changed the direction of my hike from northbound to southbound. I'd completed the hardest part of my hike and it gave me renewed confidence I could make my dream a reality despite all the difficult circumstances. I did it! <laughs> I know I still got a lot more to do, but I don't know, I'm just really proud of myself. The trail called to me in ways I cannot explain. And on this day, it called me to continue hiking. <laughs> if nothing else this mountain taught me, I can do it. I know I can do this. It was strange hiking southbound, but knowing I had Katana behind me, I took my time and enjoyed the miles ahead. Maine was unlike anything I'd ever seen. It was the toughest, most rugged, wildest state on the entire AT, and its untamed beauty absolutely took my breath away. This is beautiful. Let's look. 
It was filled with steep climbs. There is no way to show the sheer straight upness that this is. Endless tree roots. About to climb up this tree root. Just another day at the office. Rocky scrambles. There's where we're going. Narrow ledges. Kind of walking along the edge here. This rock. Unbridged water crossings. Hmm. And countless scenic lakes and ponds. Oh, that's really pretty. This here, I think, is Lake Hebron. It's a big pond. Hiking through the 100-mile wilderness was an arduous combination of all the wondrous beauty and rugged terrain Maine had to offer, as well as being the most remote section of the trail. But the accessible logging roads made it possible to get a food resupply drop from the hostel. I'm going to be getting a food drop in the 100 mile wilderness so I don't have to carry all my food. And I soon met even more hikers along the trail. Look, I just ran into Quicksilver. He is almost done. So close. It's Screwball. <laughs> How's it going? And they knew trail friends. My name's Water Girl. I'm doing a flip flop. So I'm Mayo. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I'm doing a, a true sobo. My name is uh, Skipper. And I'm from Asheville, North Carolina. I'm a flip-flopper. Just lots of roots, lots of ups and downs and rocks. <laughs> Most of the trail through Maine was extremely demanding, but sometimes it gave relief to pristine flat sections. Oh, man, it's just a beautiful stretch of trail through here. I'm going to enjoy every second of this short, pristine, flatness of trail. Oh, man. Oh, it's great. Okay, all right, that was over. <laughs> Pine forest and boardwalks. I haven't had rain in so long, I forgot what it's like to hike in the rain. Other than a few days of rain, we were fortunate to experience great weather. So the temps in Maine lately have been just amazing. And had some of the most spectacular sunrises. Now this is how you wake up in the mornings. And sunsets. Look at this sunset. Oh my gosh, how about that view? Oh my gosh. Water sources were cold, clear, and plentiful. It's super clear, like getting it out of the stream and it was ice cold. And I'm only carrying the one water because there's been like a ton of places to get water. With numerous spots to soak my feet, take a swim, and relax on a beach. Am I really in the 100 mile wilderness right now? Because I think I'm on a beach. But some of the ponds had leeches. I got a leech! Oh God, get off me! Good! Yuck! Oh my God, look at those leeches! Oh Lord. Water crossings in Maine can be treacherous, but luckily the crossings were low and most could be rock hot. Now the crossing, and they'll give you this handy rope. Water crossing! Woo -hoo! And a canoe shuttle took us safely across the Kennebec. Look, we're on the Kennebec. This is awesome. For such a remote wilderness, the campsites and privies were surprisingly pristine, even though sometimes we stealth camped. But it was amazing to experience cowboy camping on top of a mountain. Yay, cowboy camping! <laughs> Coffee, sunrise, cowboy camping, oh yeah. Tenting on a sandy beach. I've wanted to stay, camp on the beach forever and sleeping underneath a clear night sky filled with stars. Holy smokes. That was tough. Yeah. That was tough. This blaze marks 1,100 miles on the Appalachian Trail. Before I knew it, I'd hiked 1,100 miles and was officially halfway through my hike. Now, just 1,100 more to go. Oh, no. I'd hoped to see a moose. No moose today. Moose carcass. Wow. That's not the kind of moose I want to see. I don't want to see a dead moose. But the wildlife I encountered was quite smaller. Hi, mouse. Hi there, Mr. Frog. Hi, Mr. Chickmunk. Hello, Mr. Frog. Your eyebrows are amazing. They're so cool looking. There's a butterfly on my shoulder. Why are you fussing? What? Are we playing chicken? Okay, I'll just follow you then. They're hiking kind of slow though. 
and still no damn beavers. Although I did see a fisher for the very first time. Hi! <laughs> I've never seen anything like you before. Uh-oh. Uh Hiking in the harsh terrain was daunting and had its obstacles. Sometimes, sometimes. There's lots of down trees on the trail today. This is what you want to see at night. And potential dangers. So there's supposed to be like a yellow jacket's nest or something right there. As each day passed and the miles added up, the climbs and descents became exhausting. The gang's out here at the top Woo! of North Cracker! Yeah. Woo! Another peak in the books. But the magnificent views at the top were always worth the struggle. Beautiful. That is beautiful. But the strong winds made it difficult to enjoy the scenery for long. The wind is really strong! The difficult conditions sometimes made it impossible to stay upright and falls became quite frequent. <sighs> it's just freaking dangerous. As much as it seems like... <sighs> Third fall. Oh, I can't help but laugh. <laughs> As I climbed over 4,000 foot mountains, 6.30 a.m., already did a 4K. My hiker hunger quickly kicked in. We're talking about food. And foil. This is what we do the last few miles. We talk about food. Our packs are heavy because we have a crap ton of food, because we have hiker hunger. <laughs> so hungry. <laughs> I tried cold soaking my food, but quickly realized I needed hot meals to get me through the tough miles in Maine. Mashed potatoes, gravy, and some mayonnaise. Delicious. Blueberries along the trail were a delicious treat. Blueberries! And the hostels in Maine served some of the best pancakes on the entire trail. Oh my God, this is the most amazing breakfast ever. Oh my gosh. Coffee, this is heaven. So we're here at the trailhead and we just got some trail magic. Right mm. Mm. Even in a remote wilderness, we still got amazing trail magic. Trail magic. Not only on the trail, but also from wonderful trail angels. <laughs> I'm Brenda and I live in St. Albans, Maine. And I'm Juanita. I'm from Connecticut, born in Maine. And I'm Gail. And I'm from Parkman. A.T. Gracie. A.T. Gracie. Look, she brought me a Diet Coke. Odie, tell us a little bit about the Hiker Yearbook. Um, what you're so doing out here. It's a book <laughs> and this is about hikers and it's put out yearly. Hey, look, Mox, you just gave us a whole thing of blueberries. Oh my God. Uh, you all are so awesome. This lovely family came out to give trail magic to the hikers. And now I'm having avocado. Thanks to Moxie. Who gave us rods into town when we needed it most. We're back at the trailhead, getting ready to head on the trail. Scott, it was great seeing you. It's he, nice seeing he's you. He's getting ready to finish up. He's only got 10 days. Holy hell, look at this. Southern Maine was the toughest section of trail with relentless climbs and descents. Here we go. Up, up, up. Beast mode activated. <laughs> but ladders, rebar, footholds, and roots made the trek a little more feasible. Thank God for these roots, I swear. And although going through the Mahoosic Notch was challenging. We got this traverse as well. Going through the thingy. <laughs> this is what we do. Packs on, packs off. It was the funnest section on the entire trail. Well, that was one. Mahoosic Notch. We did it. Yes. It's so a tenth of a mile from the border. And I haven't seen a moose in Maine. Maine was a tough 282 miles, and it felt like a huge accomplishment when we finally reached the border. Party over here! Awesome! Keep on tubing, baby. Even though we still had many hard miles ahead, it felt like a huge accomplishment finishing Maine. So we celebrated with cigars gifted by my husband and reflected on the best parts of Maine. Maine had the best swimming holes. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Uh, best lakes and, ponds. Leeches, you know? lakes and ponds. Lakes and ponds. The ones without leeches. I, without leeches had the, <laughs> were really great. Beautiful sunsets. Beautiful and sunrises. sunsets. Uh, 
Really good climbs, great terrain. <laughs> <laughs> the terrain in New Hampshire varied wildly and was equivalent to being on an adult playground. Much of the time I climbed over house-sized boulders, up steep vertical inclines, and along the edges of cliffs. I considered myself fortunate when there were steps, ladders, and metal bars. And rock cairns instead of blazes helped mark the trail better above treeline. My body was constantly tired, constantly achy, and sometimes I napped right on the trail. I took like two naps yesterday. I, I could have slept, I could have just slept, I'm just slept. I'm just always tired. And there were plenty of obstacles. What the creepiest, grossest thing is, I have a spider in your eyelashes. Ah! Bunch of slick, wet rock with leaves and hardly anything to grab a hold of. Keep getting pelted by acorns, falling acorns. There's like tons of them falling. Look, it's like nature's speed bumps. <laughs> it's the whole ah! So my hands are like freezing and I'm, my toes are freezing. But the difficult terrain made getting trail magic even sweeter. Maya's dad has come out and taken us to the REI and now we're having Mexican food, which we have been craving for like well over a month. Thank you, Maya's dad. Thank you, Maya's dad. Although there were tons of steep climbs and steep descents, and my daily mileage dropped significantly, some sections were extremely pleasant with flat stretches, planks to walk over mud, and bridges for the water crossings. Look at all the packs. All the packs. Hey, Wild. what's up everybody? <laughs> I continued to meet other hikers along the trail. I even said to somebody yesterday, I said, I'm going to miss Praise if I don't see her today. And I see her over the breakfast table the next morning. My uh, trail name is PTL, which is Praise the Lord. I got that from some ladies on Mount Bushnell on a section hike. <laughs> we got books. And we got Rando. Baby Yoda has some fans. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> and even saw familiar faces. Whoa, Mike! What's up? <laughs> uh, we haven't seen him since Virginia. <laughs> Happy to see Braids again. I know, awesome it's good person. to see you. So yeah. that's awesome. Well, good luck for your finish. Nice meeting you yeah. and Jerry. Yeah, yeah. And although I didn't see much wildlife, I at least made a few furry friends. <laughs> so cute, so cute. What you doing? Are you gonna get closer? What? What? The incredible views throughout the whites were unsurpassed. No matter how difficult the terrain or how exhausted I felt, I would reach a mountain summit and be awed by my surroundings. I was amazed not only by the views, but how my body accomplished such difficult feats. And I've done it with a full pack all by myself. As I climbed to the top of Mount Washington, I was so happy for a clear day. Besides sleeping in the shelters, camping in New Hampshire sometimes meant tenting on platforms. Part of it's tied, part of it's on the ground, part of it's got rocks. Finding a spot to stealth camp. So I've got a stealth site, it's like right over there. But there's a graveyard right here. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. Or staying in a hut in the whites. But due to COVID, the huts were only open for food and water, which made hiking across the presidentials even more difficult. By the time we reached Lake of the Clouds Hut, my knees were giving me problems. My knees are killing me. They're like in pain. They're just hurting so bad. But the kind caretaker let us stay in the emergency shelter, also known by hikers as the dungeon. This is the dungeon. <laughs> this is truly a dungeon. <laughs> Although the huts offered potable water and there were plenty of ponds and rivers, Sometimes I had to carry extra water to make it over multiple 4,000 foot mountains. So I'm carrying like four liters of water right now and I gotta go 1.4 miles straight up a mountain. Most of the time I enjoyed the climbs, but the steep descents were killing my knees. My knees are killing me. And I resorted to wearing a knee brace while I hiked. So I'm just gonna rest my knees for today and tomorrow, I think. I ended up taking a few extra zeros to let my knees rest. I got picked up uh, by Marlene. She's a shuttle driver here and locally in New Hampshire. Um, 
with Allie's rides. She's so awesome and she's just been so helpful. And I had to say goodbye to my hiker friends. Of course, me and my water girl went ahead, went on yesterday. So I'm on my own again. As the miles passed and the leaves changed, I was happy to experience the beautiful fall colors in New Hampshire. Wow, <laughs> so pretty, look at all those colors. Oh my gosh. In a year when the world seemed chaotic, life out on the trail felt normal. Seriously though. As I reached the border with Vermont, a weight lifted knowing I now finished the two hardest states on the trail. Officially out of New Hampshire! Woo! The first few days hiking in Vermont was a welcome relief from the steep rocky ascents and descents in New Hampshire and Maine. The terrain was flatter, gentler, and I even had some road walking. Country road, take me home to a place I belong. It was nice to be able to relax and not have to focus on my steps as much. Even my knees were feeling better and I was happy to be doing a flip-flop so I could see all the fall colors on the trees. Wow. Vermont is known as the Green Mountains and much of the trail was through dense forest, but hiking through the beautiful autumn foliage was breathtaking. And the views from mountaintops and fire towers were spectacular, with gorgeous reddish-orange sunsets. I found plenty of water along the trail as I passed several ponds, more bogs, another bog, and no beavers, and no moose, and flowing creeks. And there were several well-built footbridges. Oh, look at this nice bridge for us. And sturdy planks for crossing. And I only needed to ford in a few spots. It looks fine. As I hiked further south, the AT shared the footpath with the lawn trail for 100 miles. And the terrain became much more difficult with rocky sections, steep climbs, and ladders. When in doubt, the AT always goes up. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Although the shelters were quite nice with picnic tables and benches, most of the time I slept in my tent due to mice. But I couldn't resist spending the night in the warming ski hut on top of Bromley Mountain, even if it meant sleeping with mice. The good news is that I stayed warm all night. The bad news is that there was mice really bad, like a ton of mice, and they were, oh my God, you could just hear them. I now made it 1,500 miles and the days were passing quickly, but I was worried whether I could finish this hike before the holidays. This is freaking hard. I know I've said it a thousand times, but I'll say it again. Because that's what I think about all the time. But if I can finish this thing, I'm feel, gonna feel really accomplished. Since the sun was setting so much earlier in the evening, I picked up my daily mileage by hiking into the night. Night hiking. Blech. Not a fan. Another day of hiking in the dark. And slight packing for a few days thanks to the incredible kindness of trail angels. This is all thanks to Mark. <laughs> Hi everybody. <laughs> um, he uh, has been so kind to come out here and help me out with this. Uh, it was awesome. Hopefully being able to uh, do some of the slap packing, I can get to Jerry quicker. So yes. thank you so much, Mark. Hi, I really appreciate it. Your wife is awesome. <laughs> Although I didn't see any wildlife, I met a friendly little baby goat named Peanut. What are you doing? What are you doing? Look at my shorts. She's so cute. Such a sweet little goat. Well, Charlie just dropped me off, him and his daughter. They're just super nice people. So if you're going to through hike, and you're in Vermont, look up Charlie. And I got a little too close to a couple of yellow jackets. I wasn't paying attention and my drink was sitting here. I went to drink it and there was two yellow jackets in here. And they both stung me inside my mouth. Yeah, yeah we have the Wow. But I did find some historic relics as well as some unique rock cairn gardens along the trail. Look, here's all the tribe of rock people. And I think that must be the head honcho. He's bigger. He's kind of standing there in the front. 
They're all listening to him talk about something sure related to rocks and how not to fall. And as my mileage increased, I couldn't eat enough food to sustain energy, so I took in liquid calories to help make up the deficit. And in case you're wondering, it's delicious. I was glad to have missed the mud season in Vermont. I tried really hard not to get my feet muddy here in Vermont, but good one. But a few rainy days. Yesterday was a rain fest all day long. Made the trail heavily waterlogged. <laughs> the trail is a river. Yeah, this is the trail. This has been this way for a few days now. And my feet were constantly wet, but luckily the rocky sections made for easier footing. Today has just been a series of leak frogs trying to on rocks and roots and everything to try to avoid getting my feet or keeping my feet soaked constantly. I mean, the trail is basically just a river. It's been like that almost the whole way. And after 150 miles hiked, I said so long to Vermont. It's the end of Vermont! Oh, now we're in Massachusetts. Oh yeah. Immediately upon entering Massachusetts, I was faced with another massive obstacle. Due to COVID, there was no overnight camping allowed on the 91 mile stretch. So I think what I'm gonna do at this point is actually do a few days of slap packing. I was incredibly fortunate to have so many amazing shuttle drivers. And Vic is the guy who picked me up, dropped me off. He's a shuttle driver in the area. Super nice guy. So Pete, who's a shuttle driver in the Massachusetts and Connecticut area, he dropped me off to today, uh, along with the Stone Sisters. They're southbound through hikers. And Trail Angels, who are willing to slap pad me through the state. I was dropped off this morning by a very nice gentleman named Jim. A super awesome lady named Deb was so kind. She's gonna help me slack pack for the next two days. Most of the hiking in Massachusetts was on smooth terrain where I hiked on boardwalks, across bridges and interstates, over railroad tracks, past beautiful ponds, through farmlands, and along roads and sidewalks through towns on the AT. They're all Halloweened up. But there were some steep climbs. Okay, that was actually really scary. <laughs> and descents. This is really steep and really slick. As well as some rocky sections. Ah, oh, crap, I took a wrong turn and ended up in Pennsylvania. And walking along cliffs. Lots of on the edge walking. Fall is my absolutely favorite season and hiking in Massachusetts was magical. It's raining, leaves. The views on mountaintops gave way to some brilliant colors on the trees. Oh my gosh, look at Massachusetts. The colors are amazing. Holy crap. This section also had plenty of history as I passed over Mount Greylock, the Shays Rebellion Monument, and an old home site. And although it was late October, I still spotted some wildlife. My goodness! Don't you know what time of year it is? The little frog. God, there's a bear over there. Oh, man. Well, hi there, sheep. After hiking over 1,600 miles, I found myself incessantly daydreaming about resting. Oh, I love resting, it's so amazing. <laughs> That's all I think about. And because I was physically and mentally exhausted. I'm struggling mentally this morning and physically. It was sometimes hard to stay positive. The reality is no one's gonna be out here right now with it being really cold and rainy and your socks are soaked and be like, oh my God, this is the most amazing thing I've ever done in my life. This moment is not. <laughs> Later, <laughs> when it's all said and done, it'll really be awesome. <laughs> but finding places to take a break along the trail was nice. This fantastic view. And before I knew it, I'd left Massachusetts and was back in Connecticut. Although once again, I missed the border sign. I passed it, I completely missed it. Well, I'm out of Massachusetts, <laughs> and I'm in Connecticut. <laughs> Welcome to Connecticut. After passing the border, I had some steep rock climbs over Bear Mountain and made it to the highest point in Connecticut. Highest 
campground in Connecticut. I hiked several more hard miles in the rain and finished my hike in the dark. Well, I've been hiking like two and a half miles in the dark and it's been awful. Um, I've slipped and sli slid so many times. The next day I was happy to have good weather and be hiking on gentle terrain through multiple fields and along roads. I caught the last colors of fall, passed by Great Falls and the Amesville Iron Bridge when I reached the exact spot at Falls Village where I had left the trail in August to do a flip-flop. So here I am back at this parking lot. <sighs> I've done all the doors. Yes. I was once again extremely fortunate to have a very nice couple following my journey give me a ride from Connecticut back down to Maryland to finish out the remainder of my hike. The wonderful Denise and Jay Hi. and Lily. <laughs> they just dropped me off, so I'm starting tomorrow, headed to Jerry. But I just want to say thank you so, so, so much again for this. I know this was a trek for you all, and oh, we it had a blast. means the world. <laughs> thank you so we had much. A blast. I just left the Hillside Hotel, which is where I stayed before. And this is what I had to do prior. You know, I had to walk down uh, to the AT. And then, of course, I was going north. Now I'm going to be heading south. I'm going to go back to the same spot that I started. So I don't miss one step of the AT. On October the 28th, I picked up the trail in the exact spot I had reached when I skipped Virginia. Here I am in the exact spot. And continued hiking south towards Harper's Ferry. Coming to the... Railroad Bridge. So glad it's back open. So I don't have to miss any parts of the AT. The footbridge had reopened and I was glad my steps could connect to every inch of the trail. As I entered the town of Harper's Ferry, my husband Jerry was waiting for me. Oh, I'm so happy. So happy. So happy. Along with another sweet young lady by the name of Pigtails and her mom, who was following my journey. Pigtails. Pigtails. I think this is my youngest fan. It's so awesome to meet you. At only five years old, Pigtails was already a strong hiker with a love and passion for the AT. Do you think one day you're going to want to do the AT, like the whole trail? Oh, you totally will. That's awesome. That's and I was honored to think I was an inspiration to someone so young. It was so great getting to hike with you today. Yes, I enjoyed it. Did you have fun? Good. The town of Harper's Ferry is a small, quaint town with cobblestone streets, historic churches, monuments, and many historic buildings. This is a very cool little town. It is also the location of the ATC headquarters where hikers get their picture taken and date they arrived recorded in a logbook. But due to COVID, the office was closed. It was both sad and surreal to think the class of 2020 would be the only year when no record was kept of those who had hiked the trail. On Halloween, we hiked the short distance through West Virginia and of course dressed up for the occasion. Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! The hike was incredibly short and we reached the Virginia border pretty quickly. Yay, baby Yoda! Yay, baby Yoda! We made it to Virginia! We made it. Country road, take me home to a place I belong. West Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home. I was excited to think I now had only one state left to complete my through hike. This is the way. We continued hiking into Virginia and reached the road to get a shuttle pickup and faced yet another obstacle. We're not having very good luck because there was like four shuttles on go hooks and none of them are available. None. But I've never in 1,700 miles have had any issue getting a shuttle until Virginia. Luckily, we found a shuttle but had to wait several hours in the cold for a pickup because we mistakenly didn't schedule ahead. Oh well, it's Halloween, so it's like the nightmare on whatever street we're on, <laughs> Highway 9. Even though I only had one state left, I still had 500 miles to hike as Virginia was the longest state on the entire trail. The landscape varied greatly as I hiked through several fields and flat stretches, on boardwalks and planks, 
across falls, along roads, through rocky sections, and along ledges, over bridges including the longest bridge on the AT, and sections with lots of down trees. Get to introduce Jerry to something fun on the AT today. It's a roller coaster. I told him there was fun stuff to do. <laughs> One part of the trail known as the roller coaster is full of constant ups and downs. But the rocks seem to be the biggest obstacle on this 14 mile stretch. It's not even the ups and downs of the roller coaster. It's the rocks. They're just so bad. And I was glad my husband Jerry hiked this portion with me. <laughs> Woohoo! We finished the roller coaster ride. It sucked. In Northern Virginia, I hiked 100 miles through the Shenandoah National Park. And it was a welcome relief from the rocky, steeper section of the roller coaster. This portion of trail consisted of gentle climbs with relatively smooth terrain, making it easier to do bigger mile days. I guess I did about 20 miles today. There are places to stop and eat along the trail known as waysides, and I was fortunate a few were still open to enjoy a hot meal. Um, they're actually closing in a couple days, so I just made it. I cannot believe it. After months on the trail, I felt like I was one with nature as I encountered so many friendly deer. Well, hi there. The deer princess. I could be a new Disney character. <laughs> Including an inquisitive buck. I thought for a second you were a donkey. <laughs> I did. I thought you were a donkey. Okay, go on. You feel like you've become so in tune with nature that the animals just come to you. <laughs> Hi. Never seen a branch walk before. Oh my gosh, that is really... Oh, those, it looks like a tree. Look! Yeah, it's yeah, a those freaking tree! Free. After leaving the Shenandoahs, the AT followed along the Blue Ridge Parkway for approximately 80 miles. The trail crossed the road several times, and I saw numerous beautiful overlooks. Pretty. I even met a nice couple who brought me trail magic. Becky and Denny. Do y'all have trail magic? We do. Okay, what's your name? This was Will and I was Way. Oh. <laughs> well, there's a Will, there's a Way. And then they brought me all these goodies. Look at this. I got some oranges and apples and there's some brownies in there. Well, it's very nice to meet you and thank you so much for this. Oh, oh, you're you're welcome. Welcome. November was hunting season in Virginia, so I wore orange to make sure I was seen by hunters. I don't know if you can hear the dogs. But there's hunters out, there's a lot. I saw like three trucks drive by. I even passed a few hunting dogs along the trail. No, you're sweet, but you're busy, you're working. Through Virginia, the climbs and descents were much longer, but the terrain was considerably gentler with plenty of switchbacks along the trail. Well, that's the part I've noticed about Virginia so far is a lot of switchbacks, which is pretty cool because it looked pretty, like it'd be pretty steep, but it's not been too bad. Water sources were flowing along the trail. Look at this amazing spring. And I forded more crossings in this state than any other. It's another crossing. I discovered many historic landmarks along the trail, including the Audie Murphy Monument, an old school house at Sellers Museum, the W.J. Mayo Home Place, some old grave sites, and the Keffer Oak, a 300-year-old tree. As I hiked, I also passed several unique rock formations with names like the Guillotine and Dragon's Tooth, and even crossed over the Eastern Continental Divide. Most of the leaves had fallen from the trees and the views throughout Virginia were magnificent. Although the shelters in Virginia were well maintained and some even had makeshift showers, most of the time I chose to stealth camp. But even sleeping in my tent, sometimes mice still were an issue. The mice came to my tent. So here comes this little white mouse, crawled right up the freaking net. I punched him and he, he went flying. But I did visit the famed priest shelter where it's tradition among hikers to confess your trail sins in the logbook. I am going to, um, Confess my sins. <laughs> I hardly saw any other hikers on the trail after leaving the Shenandoahs, and I spent most days hiking completely alone. Just me and my shadow. I haven't seen anyone. Not a day hiker, not a section hiker, not owner hiker, not a through hiker, not a hunter, nobody. But as I hit 1,800 miles, look, it's shaped just like Tennessee. 
Leave no trace, remember. My husband, Jerry, made a quick trip to come see me. He drove six hours to come see me for one day. And he's gonna drive back six hours after that. Because he's the best husband in the whole wide world. You're a little rot, dear. <laughs> he, he got in the car, he's like, oh my God. <laughs> I don't smell, I don't smell myself. I smell fine. <laughs> I wish YouTube had a smell of vision. No, nobody would watch this. <laughs> and my sweet hiker friend, Mama Bear, even came out to bring me trail magic. Thank you, Mama Bear. And fresh apples from that board. Oh my gosh. Down the road. <laughs> oh, Jerry, I was going to fix you. I know, you're, you're doing a good job. <laughs> and hike with me. Hello. So she came out and she's hiked the last couple miles with me. Because I wanted to make it home before Christmas, I hiked most days well into the night. It is virtually impossible to see anything when you're hiking in the dark in dense fog. You scare me. It's a buck. All right, dude. Oh, ah! I thought the buck was gonna run at me. But I saw some of the prettiest sunrises. Now that is cool looking. And sunsets on my hike. Oh, this is beautiful. Wow, look at this sunset. That's amazing. There's a beautiful view. Wow. I will say Virginia has some amazing sunsets. It's crazy. And even experienced an epic sunset with Jerry at Raven Rocks. And on the famous McAfee Knob. Throughout Virginia, my feet constantly ached with frequent sharp pains. Between my heel and then the arches in my feet. Oh my God, I mean like they're in so much pain. I may have to take a rest here. I don't know. Let's we'll see. I'm gonna try to do some treatment on my feet and see if that helps. And nothing seemed to help. I rode ointment on it, rolled out my feet and my calves and everything. I, I iced my heel for hours yesterday. Um, just, you know, did all kinds of stuff. Did some exercises, stretching, things like that. So I decided to spend a few days off trail and go home to rest and celebrate Thanksgiving with my family before finishing my last 300 miles of the AT. Upon returning to the trail on December the 1st, the weather had turned cold. It's cold outside. Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> ice, ice baby. It's been quite a while since I saw icicles. And strong winds only made it colder. Oh man, it's so windy. It's really, really, really cold. It's like, um, I think it's in the teens. But I got to enjoy a few warm days. By the last day, you will see me wearing short sleeves for the remainder of my hike. And before I knew it, I'd reached 2,000 miles. 2,000 miles! Woohoo! Even though I had less than 200 miles left, my knees were once again hurting and my frustrations got the best of me. It's, it's so frustrating that I keep having these things happening. I just want to finish. Although many things tried to deter my hike, no matter what obstacles I faced, I was determined to keep going despite my circumstances. The weather was another constant challenge throughout my hike, and while staying at Angel's Rest Hostel, a large snowstorm hit, which meant finishing the remaining days hiking in snow. Today has been like an endless walk in white. Lots and lots of this so far. The snow glows white on the mountain tonight, not a footprint to be seen. A kingdom of isolation, and it looks like I'm the queen. Let the storm rage on, the cold never bothered me anyway. With the snow, 
you see all the animals that are out. <laughs> but once again, the trail provided with wonderful shuttle drivers. This is Charlie. <laughs> He has been shuttling the past few days. Now, there's a shuttle driver in the area. His name is Homer. And I spoke to him last night so I could get a ride today. He's picking me up. He's the nicest man. Broccoli Rob just dropped me off from Angel's Rest. An amazing trail angels who helped me reach the finish before Christmas. Mama Bear was so nice. She offered to take me with her, home with her, and bring me back to the trail in the morning. The lovely, wonderful Pringles Hello. just dropped me off. She's so awesome. <laughs> thank you so much to Carrie yes, for thank you. everything. She's been so awesome these past four days and helping me out. Or I guess like four Glad and a half days. Glad to have pushed you to the finish. <laughs> you time. did. You got me here. I'm finishing before Christmas. Yay! On December the 23rd, I reached Grayson Highland State Park, where my husband Jerry, close friends Angela, Carrie, and Christy, an adorable wild pony, celebrated my finish with me. Oh, I did it! I finished the pony! <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is my last place. I hit it. That's my last one. Yeah. And despite hiking during a global pandemic and numerous difficult obstacles, I accomplished my dream just two days before Christmas. Baby Yoda, we did it! Do you hike 2,193 miles? Although my hike wasn't northbound and Katahdin wasn't my finish, my journey was uniquely special and something I will never forget. Walking alone in the woods for months on end and facing countless obstacles allowed me the opportunity to know myself better and be the person I was deep inside. Courageous, strong, and resilient. It doesn't matter whether you take four months, six months, eight months, or a year, whether you hike north, south, or a flip-flop, each step is yours to hike however you choose. A through hike is much more than just walking in the woods for months on end. It's a journey as individual as the person who takes it. And the only wrong way to hike this trail is to not hike it at all. Obstacles aren't a deterrent to accomplishing your dreams, but an integral part of the journey to reach them. <music> 2020 was a year of sacrifice, change, and heartbreak. It forever changed the way we communicate, interact, and see the world and our surroundings. And in the chaos and conflict, the wilderness became a necessity more than ever. The class of 2020 not only took on the physical and mental challenge of hiking over 2,000 miles, but did so in a year that had even more obstacles than usual. Even though we were called outlaws and rule breakers, we didn't hike the trail for recognition or to be rebellious. We hiked the trail because the call was just too strong. And we are forever grateful for those in the Appalachian Trail community who helped make our journeys possible despite the circumstances. As Bit Mackay had once envisioned, even in devastation and disease, may the outdoors always be wild and the freedom to hike always remain. May the trail be preserved as a safe space to escape the burdens of society and as a restorative place for not only our physical well-being, but our mental health as well. Let us always be able to answer the call.